Hi you guys, welcome back. Whew, it's hot. So, I went to the International Air Raid Show in Florida. It was not expected. Before we get started, please make sure to like and subscribe. That way you can hang out while we do a bunch of planty stuff, follow along. And also, as you guys go through the video, drop a comment if you have any questions. Leave a comment if you guys went to the International Air Raid Show. And um, yeah, if you guys have literally any questions as I'm going through this, please don't hesitate, comment below. Dino and I flew down to visit his family in Cape Coral, Fort Myers area. And then we looked and it happened to be the same weekend as the Miami International Air Raid Show. And that's at Fairchild Botanical Gardens, I believe. It's more South Miami. So I was like, man, for once I'm like in Florida at the same time as the show. Do we go? Honestly, I we were there to visit his family, so I wasn't really sure. I mean, that's a two and a half hour drive. That's kind of a lot to ask of people, but everybody was actually on board and wanted to go and then just make a day trip out of it and actually check out Miami. So that was actually kind of nice. So we literally flew down there on Friday at, I had to wake up at like four in the morning but I think we flew down we ended up getting in Florida at like 11 a.m Florida time which there's a time zone change from Minnesota and I didn't go to sleep the whole day I was like I'm gonna stay up and make sure that I'll be able to get sleep later tonight fast forward on Saturday this show the show is actually from Thursday to Sunday but that's because there's an actual show aspect of it which is not really what I would be going for. I mainly wanted to go to see the botanical garden, to see the vendors, meet people, like that kind of side of things. I didn't really want to go for like the show, but I will say if I had to plan it, I would maybe try and go to that perfect choice nursery after our hours party that they do. If you guys don't know, perfect choice nursery is in that area and every year, uh, I don't know if it's Thursday or Friday, but they host a big party at the greenhouse and it is, it looks so fun. And so sometime I would definitely like to go for that. I would have to plan to make that. But otherwise we just literally went on Saturday. We just went for one day. On Saturday, we left a little later than I would have liked to but also we were all so exhausted and tired because like I said, like we had such an early flight and we hadn't really gotten much sleep in the past like two days. So, you know, it is what it is. And so yeah, we left and I would say we got there on Saturday around, I don't know, maybe like one, one or two or something like that. Sometime in the afternoon. But when we got there, they already were doing the speaker talks. So they usually have one or two speakers and you can go and just listen and they'll talk about a topic. I was there with Dino, his sister and his dad. And that wasn't something like, maybe that's something I would be interested in, but I wouldn't want to make people wait and you know, drag people to a talk like that if I didn't think that they were gonna be interested. So we didn't really go for that anyways, but we were there during that time, which meant that there were a lot of people at that versus people in the vendor area. And that actually kind of favored for us, like that was kind of good because then we had the ability to walk around and shop and talk a little bit more. It was still busy, like don't get me wrong, it was still very packed and busy, but I can't imagine how it would have been if then anyone from the talks also were there. You know what I mean? So we got to the garden, we walk in. I'm already seeing people walking out with like wagons of Thai constellations and monsteras and all these rare plants and I'm like oh my gosh like I don't even know what I'm getting myself into 
and we walked in there was a little baby alligator which was super cute everyone was freaking out it was right next to where you buy the tickets um and then we walked in and i've never been to this botanical garden i've been to the naples botanical garden but i've never been to the fairchild one in miami so totally different by the way like i loved the naples ones but the Fairchild one felt like you were literally in a jungle. It was amazing. Like I, I couldn't believe how big some of the plants were. And so to get to where the vendors were from where we parked, you are kind of walking a little bit through it, which I liked. And it's just like crazy. It's crazy. It's beautiful. Like I think whether you're a plant person or not, you can appreciate it. You know what I mean? So I know that everybody that we were with was just like, oh my God, wow. It was really awesome. And I'm going to make sure if I can, I'll put footage in this video while I talk. But if I can't, I'm for sure going to make a YouTube short. So that way you guys can get visuals of everything I'm talking about. Because I recorded while I went through, but I didn't record for YouTube because I was so in the moment. So anyways, you walk in and we saw that immediately from the direction that we came from, there were a bunch of vendors lined up on the left. And then there was this kind of like hedge bush area that almost separates. And then you had more like three rows, three or four rows of vendors on the other side of those bushes. Um, as we were walking, we heard somebody say, oh, I didn't know that there were more vendors on the other side of the bushes. So we were kind of trying to look out for that to make sure that we didn't miss anything. And then we saw that as we came in. So that was kind of nice that we were like, okay, keeping that in mind. We got there and it is just so cool. I'm so excited. I personally didn't know that there were gonna be so many vendors. I thought there was just gonna be like a handful based on their website. But when they say on the website, all the vendors and more, they really do mean and more. And it was so exciting because there were vendors from Thailand, Singapore, Indonesia, I think, um, obviously Florida. There were some from the Midwest. It was really nice because there were so many vendors that either you cannot shop from personally, like they're wholesale only, or they are international and they don't do like personal sales. They only do like large shipments you know because you have to deal with customs and all that stuff but yeah in general it was just really nice because there were so many vendors so many shops and sellers and growers that maybe you otherwise would not get to meet and purchase from we're going to take a quick break and talk about the sponsor of today's video and that is sansi oh my gosh Sansy LED, I am so excited for this sponsorship. If you guys recall in a video um, not too long ago, I moved the Thai constellation into the corner and I was saying that Dino and I gotta get a pendant light and sure enough, we ordered a shade but we didn't have a light bulb and Sansy came in clutch. Sansy LED has so many different kinds of grow lights, you guys. Like you can get just a bulb, you can get a fixture, you can get clip-on lights. They have so many types of grow lights to work with whatever issue you're trying to solve. For me and Dino, it was our dark corner. So as you guys can see right now, it's actually very well lit. That's because I have the Sansy bulb in there and I'm gonna show you guys how I installed it. I am so excited to talk about the Sansy Grow Light that we were gifted. It is the PAR 25 10 watt smart grow bulb and it actually has app control smart features with it, which I just absolutely love. The smart features in the app control came in handy for our Florida trip because as we're gone, I have to have timers set up with grow lights so that they just don't go without light for multiple days at a time. So I always look for these kind of timers and smart features and Sansy's grow lights offer those, which I am just super excited about. What we did is we purchased a lampshade so that it would cover the bulb because that's just our aesthetic, but you can really do whatever you want. Or you can even just have the light bulb screwed into one of your lamps around the house. It's really that simple. And then it offers full spectrum light for your plants, which is just awesome. 
If you guys are interested in trying out any of the Sansy Grow Lights, you can shop the link below. That is my affiliate link. I also have a 20% off discount coupon code for you. So check that out in the description. I'm also gonna put it on the screen for you to make it easy. And yeah, I highly recommend. I'm going to definitely be buying some more products, especially I think those clip-on grow lights because you guys know I like those as my backup lights. Thank you so much, Sanzi, for the gift. My Thai constellation is absolutely loving it. Let's get back to it. So right away, we started shopping with like the first row of vendors and then it started to rain and then it started to pour. So we went inside, they had an inside area and within that, it was really cool. They had a bunch of show plants. Um, again, remember I said that there's an actual show aspect to the whole thing. So you had a bunch of like big specimen show plants that were like beautiful, amazing. And then you had a couple areas that you could take photos. I didn't because we were just trying to move through things. And then in the middle, they had a bunch of tables that you could then pull plants and shop. And personally, I don't know who owned and supplied those plants. They were all just kind of everywhere. And then I think there was one checkout area in the back. So I don't know if there was one shop in particular that like had the whole inside area or what, but yeah. And while we were in there, we actually ran into a Minnesotan. We ran into MN Botanicals. And that was the first time I got to meet her. I have talked on Instagram with her and had no clue that she was gonna be there. So that was super fun. Honestly, we barely, like we last minute decided to go to this aeroid show. So I, as you guys probably know, like I haven't posted that I was going. I didn't really say much about it. I just kind of went and was like, I'm here. <laughs> and yeah, so it was really fun, like running into somebody from Minnesota, a local. There were other people there. I believe Forrest from Lost in the Forest, she was there. Um, there were some other, like I'll say plant influencers and yeah, just a bunch of other people that were there. But honestly, we didn't run into people really. Just MN Botanicals. I think it could have been because we got there later. The show opens at 10 a.m. And so we got there like when it was already two hours, two, three hours in. So people could have came and went. People could have been in the talks. So that's kind of why we didn't really run into a ton of people, but it was really fun to run into one. So shout out to MM Botanicals. I'm so happy that you said hi. All right, so once the rain kind of chilled, didn't really stop. It just kind of calmed down a little bit. We went back outside and then we started going through the vendors again. Honestly, I get, what is it called? I don't want to say executive dysfunction it's where i get overwhelmed by so many things and then i get like paralyzed because i'm like i don't know where to start um so yeah we just i mean luckily dino was next to me and then his sister and dad were shopping around and so it was just really nice that we just started going through and it was really fun i personally i'll put a list down below if i can figure out the exact vendors that i shopped from because i believe they were all international vendors now that I think about it. So the first place that we went, I got this cutie. I got an Anthurium King of Spades. This one, I think, what did I pay? I paid a hundred bucks, but Honestly, I've been wanting this one and locally, I believe it's still pretty high up there. It's I've seen it in the two to 300 range. Um, I believe the prices are starting to come down. So you might get it for somewhere in the hundred something, one to 200 range. So personally for a really nice healthy one that is a little baby that can grow into my environment conditions, I was happy and a hundred bucks. I mean, I could see that there were healthy roots and yeah. So I got this cutie. This is the Anthurium King of Spades. And this is the first plant that I bought from an international seller. And again, I will try to figure out 
I, you don't get like receipts or anything, but I'll try and figure out who I got that from and list them below if I can. Then at this point, it started downpouring again. And then honestly, from there on out, it was pouring rain the whole time. So mind you, we were there for, I think a couple hours and we were just accepting it. Like we were gonna get caught in the rain. We were soaked, it was hot. It was kind of crappy in that sense, but you know, we just had to do what we had to do. We should have brought an umbrella. The only thing is because of that, we then favored tents that had area and space to go into and stand under, you know what I mean? So there were half of the vendors that the owners were inside the tent and then the tables were around it. And so then you were standing outside of the tent, not really covered. And then you had people who had it more of a U shape and then you walk into it and you're under the tent. So the ones that had the U shape that we could go under the tent from the rain are the ones that we favored. A really, really tough vendor that I could have bought everything was Equigenera. That shop, I have been wanting to order from them for so long. Equigenera, they have an international shop and then they have a shop based in Florida and they do importing and they will get beautiful specimens, large specimens, and then you can get things for such a good price. The only downside of it is that you're importing. So you want to be able to know how to acclimate and how to take care of an imported plant. It's not always as simple as, oh, it arrived, unpackaged, and then it's good. Like you will have to like hydrate it. You'll have to acclimate it. Like it's imported from totally different conditions. So yeah, I, I've always wanted to order from Equigenera, but I never did because personally, I just, I've usually found plants I've wanted locally and haven't gotten to that point where I'm like, now I wanna start importing. But because they have a shop in Florida, it helps a lot with the whole customs situation when it comes to importing. So anywho, long story short, I've always wanted to order from them, have yet to do it. So I was so excited to see that they were there as a vendor and we went into their shop. I really wish that I would have filmed their tent to give you a really good idea on what they do but i honestly didn't really get to film much for the rest of the show because it was pouring rain and we weren't the only ones trying to cram under the tents so not a lot of space and personally i also just wanted to connect with the people in the shop so i didn't just sit there and like film it but what was interesting and different that i've always heard people say but never seen for myself is Equigenera, when you go in there, it's like, it's like you're flipping through albums. It's literally a bunch of plants flattened into plastic packaging that you can see through the leaves. Like it's not like anything's getting crushed, but basically they're so flat. So you're like flipping through like pages and, or like albums. And so like, that's really cool. I could have spent so much money there. I am so proud that I limited and had a budget because, oh my God, you guys, you know that I've been on an Anthurium kick for the past year. And when I tell you they just had any and every Anthurium in the mature form, oh my God, it was so hard. But I will say, the Anthurium King of Spades that I got was going to be the only Anthurium I bought the whole trip. I did that purposefully because A, I think I need to do some rearranging with my cabinets and see where I can have space if I were to get more Anthuriums. And then B, I'm having to travel and take these on a plane and I, Anthuriums can be fussy so I didn't really want to get any plant that was going to be a risk that, you know, would either die before I even get home or I get home, has such a hard time acclimating and then dies. So I purposefully was not going for anthuriums on this trip, but it was so hard. I'm talking leaves this big, like plants this tall, like it, I just, 
it was so hard. All my dream and theoriums all in one place for sale. But you know what? Once I figure out my situation, I will just order. I'll order them. I like Equigenera. Prices were pretty decent. They were somewhere a little higher than I would have expected, but also for mature specimens, that's what you're gonna get. But yeah, I, I went through, I looked, I didn't go too far into it because I already knew I wasn't probably gonna buy anything and other people were wanting to shop. And again, it was raining, so other people were filing into the tent. So I wasn't gonna spend too much time there. They really only had anthuriums by the time we went. They may, have, they may have had other plants earlier that then they sold out of. I think they maybe had like some epipenum marbles, like some random ones, but for the most part, there were anthuriums and I was like, I can't. <laughs> we were walking and we found another tent that wasn't super crowded. So we're like, okay, let's go check it out. They had a lot of what I liked. And when we walked in, they just had a bunch of Monstera elbows in the same kind of flat plastic wrapping just all over the ground, like just tons of them. I think they were a hundred bucks or something. And then they had a bunch of rare plants. I think they had strawberry shakes, variegated philodendron radiatum, um, syngonium scrambled eggs, variegated billies. Oh. The, bi the billies, you guys. So many variegated billies and I just, I was drooling. You guys, this this whole show had so many wishlist plants that I'm like, someday. Anywho, so it was another international seller. I believe they said they were from Thailand and super, super nice guys. There were two guys that were working the tent. Um, I did get their business card, so I will look and for sure include that in the description below. They were so funny and so fun, so personable. They were just joking with each other. And personally, I liked that. Like when you walk into some of these booths, you know, I like getting to talk to the owners, but at the same time, sometimes I'm just looking cause something caught my interest and it's nice to not feel like somebody's like hovering for me to buy something. So it was just so nice, like going in there, talking with Dino and his family and then they're just talking and joking with each other and having a good time clearly So it was really nice felt good and That is where I got my next plant That is where I got a Syngonium scrambled eggs This plant right now locally again was about two to three hundred. I paid $50 and it's the mature leaf shape. Not fully mature, cause like, if you guys know Syngonium, they get lobey. They get like, right now they have two lobes, they'll get a lot. So it's not like that mature, but if you guys see the baby Syngonium scrambled eggs, the leaves are more round. They start little, they're rounder, and maybe that's part of the whole egg comment too, but yeah, when you wanna get one that's a little more on the established leaf shape, you normally will be paying more. And actually, this was the last one of the mature, mature leaf shape. They had baby ones and I didn't even see this one. I was looking at the baby ones and I was actually gonna get a baby one for $50. And then, the owner was the ones who were like joking around with each other. The owner was like, hey, if you want, there's one more larger one and I'll give it to you for the same price as the baby one. So I was like, are you sure? Like, okay. So for 50 bucks, I got this beautiful Syngodium scrambled eggs. It came in sphagnum moss wrapped up and yeah, and it has really good roots. So I was like, okay, sure. Now I will say Syngonium, and they even told me this too. They're like, Syngonium don't usually travel well. So it was one that they weren't wanting to take back with them by any means. But also they were like, just know Syngonium don't travel well. So it'd be good to get like the bigger one compared to the little ones. And I can tell I have one leaf that's kind of struggling. And so what I think I'm gonna do, they even told me, they're like, this would be a good chop and prop opportunity 
But what I think I'm going to do is, everything seems good. I see also two growth points coming in. So there's one right there, and then there's one, uh, you can barely see it, but right there. What I'm gonna do is, it's in a bunch of moss. I'm actually gonna take it out of the moss, rinse it down, put it in water, just to give it a really good drink. And then I will be potting it up in soil. And then I might take, I might take one cutting, but honestly the nodes on this one are very close together. And I think while it's acclimating after having flown home with me, I think I'm gonna just start with the water and potting it. And then if I see it start to slowly decline, then I'll probably take some cuttings. That's probably gonna be my plan. But yeah, for 50 bucks, I am so happy. I I was waiting for this one to start coming down in price and I'm sure they probably will. But yeah, Syngonium scrambled eggs. Keep that shop in mind because we went back later and I'll tell you why later. Coffee break. Okay, so at this point we made it through the first two rows and then actually probably all three rows of vendors. And then we were like, all right, let's not forget. Let's go around the bushes and see that other row of vendors that people keep saying they forget about. Mind you, up until now, I paid cash with all of these plants. I purposefully did cash because A, it set a budget for me and B, I heard that there was not good reception. And a lot of the vendors, they either did PayPal, Venmo, Cash App, Zelle, like they did one of those apps or they did cash. So I personally, I was like, if there's not gonna be good reception and I don't wanna risk it, I'm gonna bring cash and budget myself. Responsible. Mind you also, I'm taking all these plants on the plane, so I also was limited anyways, but I digress. We went around the bushes, it's still pouring. But I think that's where we saw a plant proper, pretty sure. There were two vendors around there that I was familiar with. There were a lot of shops that had basically around the same things, but couldn't go under the tent. And I'm sitting there like this with a bag over my head, like one of those tote bags, trying to like cover myself, but you know, that is where we found a tent that had, it was a shop based in Thailand, but the people work in the booth are from the States and they know the owners in Thailand. So we walk in and again, you can imagine, it is just a sea of rare plants everywhere. Like any plant you can think of, variegated form. <laughs> I was, I literally, I if I had more money, <laughs> I would have purchased so many plants. They had a ton of my wish list plants, but I knew that I probably could only get one. And the price points were pretty good, to be honest. I would say they were slightly under market price, so pretty good and they usually had multiples of each thing. Again, there were two variegated billies. They had the variegated radiatum, a different like variegated philodendron, literally every type of rare plant that you can think of. They all looked really, really healthy and I got intrigued by one of them in particular, which is this cutie. This is the Philodendron Bipenifolium Variegated. This one has been my wishlist plant for like, for a long time, like months. I've seen it sold many places, but I've been waiting to see if the price would come down. So I saw this half moon and another half moon and it looks like the stem has, let me show you, more variegation towards the bottom. And then towards the top, you can see starts to get a little bit less 
striping like more how do I describe it maybe I can show you I just don't want the camera to get covered like right there so you guys see the striping on the stem that kind of is an indicator on how that variegation is going to carry through so there were two three of these and I literally pulled every single one out and was looking at them and choosing because I was like I'm gonna get one of these I've been wanting one this was 150 and it has a new leaf new leaf on the way very good variegation all throughout and half moons and it looks like it almost alternates between like super variegated half moons and then ones that just have like a little bit of that marbling variegation and then like i said like every other leaf so honestly i was like i'm gonna get this one and it was 150 i would say i honestly on our way to the show i had screenshotted a couple of these through sellers that i shot from so that i could compare if i found it i was kind of looking for this one and i'd say from what i've seen these have been like for this size mind you for this size with two four six seven leaves and one on the way you'd be paying like upper 200s to 300 and i paid 150 for her and again like good roots um i like that a lot of the sellers had them in clear containers cups or saran wrap so that you can see the roots through it um and yeah and it's established and it's a philodendron so i know she's gonna be okay on the plane purchasing this was not so easy because it was on the other side of those bushes i actually only had a little bit of cash left like it was 150 and i had about 50 in cash left and so i was just gonna venmo the last 100 and then that was it that's my shopping i would look but i can't buy kind of a thing and oh my gosh you guys the the reception just i was we were sitting there i felt so bad for the shop because i'm like if i'm having troubles i bet other people are and that must not really have been fun so we were just sitting there and i kept trying to make it work and i was like can i give you cash and they were like because they weren't the actual owners they're like if we do cash you have to have the exact amount because we don't have any cash to give as change and so we were sitting there for a long time i was trying to make it work but luckily was able to get some cash and i just i was like i i want to get it but like i have to be able to pay you and so yeah in the end did a cash payment for it and that was the last plant i bought um but some people bought something else which is pretty crazy I don't know why I'm being so weird about this. Okay, so I got plans. I looked through, I stopped myself. I was like, if I gotta bring these on the plane, I'm gonna buy just three plants. They'll fit in a little carry-on tote. I'll tell you how I did the whole flying with plants thing at the end. And, but I was like, you know, if we want, we can still walk around, look at what's left. I for sure am like, I'm tapped out and I'm stopping myself. And so actually, Dino's dad was like, oh, backing up. Dino's mom, shout out to Yasmira. She is a big plant lady too. She loves plants. She's got beautiful, beautiful specimen plants at her place. And just, she's also all into like the jungle vibes. She could not make the show. And so Dino said, I want to buy her a gift, buy her a plant. And so once I did my shopping, I'm helping them figure out, okay, what would she like? Cause I know her and her plants. We were walking around and we actually, when we were at the last seller that I got that variegated by Penifolium from, we saw that they had three variegated philodendron billies billy tays billy ATAs, however you want to say it now during the whole show basically for any of those variegated billies at any vendor you are paying for the variegation and a little bit about the size 
but honestly, they were all about the same size. They just had their own variegation. And so where we got the variegated bipenifolium, there were three billies, all very distinct. And you could tell the most expensive one is the one that has the most variegation and then, you know, down and then down again. Like the cheapest one was like, I think like 800 something, but you would be risking it reverting and it didn't really have a ton of variegation. So I just, I could never pay that and risk that for a variegated Billy. And I made sure to express that. So then we FaceTimed Yasmira and showed her. She was like, oh my God. And I was like, okay, well, let's see how much they are at all the other vendors, just like curiosity. So we actually went back to the one vendor who gave me the Syngonium scrambled eggs um, because A, they were super funny, super nice, and we just really liked them and we knew that they had a variegated billy. So I was like, let's just go see. We went there, we talked to them and <sighs> they actually were super nice and they were willing to negotiate on the billy which was you know not much but they definitely negotiated and i'm not gonna say how much it was because that was a gift and if yesmira watches this which she does i don't want to say anything but anyways they had a beautiful variegated billy i'll put it up or you'll see it in the other video and it was stunning, 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 stunning. Had one of the best variegation patterns in the whole show. And again, you know, we went late, who knows? There could have been like so many variegated billies everywhere. But from what we saw and the price points and then being able to have like probably one of the lowest price points for it, such a good deal out of my budget, but uh, Dino's dad was so nice and bought it as a gift for Yasmira, which, wow, <laughs> wow, stunning, amazing. And then we called and showed her and she was all excited and yeah, it was pretty crazy. I mean, that is such a wishlist plant of mine that honestly, I have no clue if I'll ever own it unless they really lower the price or if I can get a baby for like a good price. I don't know when that'll ever be in my price range. So I have like the bag of plants that I bought and then I get to walk around and like we're holding the variegated Billy and everyone's like, wow. <laughs> so it was pretty crazy and that was so exciting. I did not expect that to happen. <laughs> and then after the show, we were like, let's walk around a little bit, see the jungle and see what else we wanna do in Miami. We walked back the way we came a little bit. No, no we didn't. We actually walked a different way around that same direction though. We did not explore the whole garden. Honestly, if it wasn't pouring in 95 degrees, then we probably would have, but we were already super unprepared. I didn't even think to bring an umbrella. <laughs> we were like, okay, well let's walk a little bit and then we'll see. I mean, we're already drenched and sticky and it was not fun for that, but yeah, so we walked around and it was so cool, you guys. I took so many clips and it is just a jungle. Like some of the plants, I cannot believe how big they were. And then you got the cl the climbing plants on all the trees, like the vines. It just was amazing. And then they had a bunch of like mist, like mist fog and it felt felt so jungle. It was so nice. Like that is Fairchild Botanical Garden is one that I would definitely go just for walking the garden. That'll probably be a bucket list thing for me is to go and actually experience the whole place. We only went to a little part of it. We didn't even go to half if not most of the garden. So yeah, that that's a bucket list is to go back and actually walk the garden, maybe not during an aeroid show so that 
it's not as busy, you know? We were really hungry and so we actually, we went to a mall in the area and got like coffee and walked around a little bit, shopped a little bit. And then we went to this Bosnian restaurant. It was a restaurant hookah bar in Miami. It was like a street over from Miami Beach. Oh, I don't remember the name of it off the top of my head, but I took a picture of the sign. I'll put that in here so you guys can see. It was so cute. It was so like tropical. It was really vibey. They had cute lights, a lot of like botanical decorations and we got some really good food and yeah, that was just a really good way to kind of end our Miami day trip. And then we drove home and we all like knocked out in the car. Cause I think by that time it was like nine o'clock at night and it was dark and I just like, knocked out i was so tired when you're in the heat and the rain and you were walking all day and then you have a two hour night car ride <laughs> took a good nap for sure all right so now it's sunday we're back in fort myers and we decided to go to the beach relax it was so nice so so nice and then we went home picked did some like uh mexican takeout and then we had to honestly pack and I had to figure out how I'm gonna travel with the plants and help with Yasmira's plants. So we basically, all the plants came in sphagnum moss. So for me, because I'm traveling on the plane, that's fine. I left everything in the sphagnum moss in their packaging because all of the sellers came and brought their plants and left them packaged from for and from traveling. So I didn't actually mess with that because I was like, I'm only gonna be here another day. They can just stay in their wrapped packaging in their moss. I'll just make sure that they're getting light and airflow. But with Yasmira's plants, she's in Minnesota for a long time. And so I couldn't leave a variegated billy in moss cause it would just dry out. And then you're like, it, I, I was not gonna risk it. So I potted that up in some soil and put that on a bright sunny window. And then, oh, I forgot to mention the seller, the really cool funny ones, they actually threw in a free Halloweena, Halloweena, I can't pronounce it, Halloweena Mint. They threw in a free one. So I also had to pop that up as well. It was a little baby one and they said like, you know, they don't really travel well, so we definitely don't wanna bring it back. And here's the Billy, like we'll give you this one for free because we like worked with them. Like I said, they were really nice to work with, negotiate with and just talk to. They were really awesome guys. So they threw in that for free. So I, on Sunday night, potted up both the Variegated Billy and the Halloween Mint. And then my plants, I left in their packaging, but I basically, what I have them? I've had like a little brown paper bag and I put them all in there. I only had three. Again, I did that on purpose. I only had three plants. If I had like 10 plants, I don't know what I would have done. I would have had to do something totally different, but three plants, fairly small. I put them in a brown paper bag and then I actually had like a one of those reusable bag shopping bags. So I had one of those and I put the paper bag in that. And then while I was traveling, I had a Kate Spade like a my backpack and then a crossbody for my wallet and things. So because you know you can only have so many carry-on items, I put my backpack into the tote bag with the brown paper bag as my one carry-on item and then my crossbody was my personal item so i purposefully checked a bag going down to florida and then we flew delta so you get a free carry-on bag so i knew that okay i'm checking one to go down there and then my plants are going to be my carry-on item coming home like i pre-planned that you got to make sure that you plan that because if you don't other times in the past, I have to hope that I can shove this plant into my carry-on and not get crushed. That's what happened with my baby Anthurium Luxurians. I luckily had a baby so I could do that, but it is honestly best to just 
plan ahead of time and expect that you'll have plants to bring on the plane and have that be either a part of your carry-on or its own carry-on or personal item. It could be a personal item if you don't have a ton and it can fit under the seat and and you don't have any other personal items. So yeah, but just it really helped to have a big enough bag that I could put my other bags into. So my backpack into the paper bag. So it's technically the one bag. So, and I had no fusses. I had no complaints. I had, I didn't get stopped at all with security. I literally just took the bag of plants. I left it in the tote bag. So I left it in the paper bag, in the tote bag. And I just put it in a bin and had it go through security. They didn't even wanna like unwrap anything, look at anything because essentially it was, and I'll put a picture in or a video, but it was like this and then there was paper and then it was taped and wrapped so nothing could fall out of the cup. So they didn't even bat an eye. They didn't wanna unwrap, they didn't wanna look in the pots, they didn't wanna see anything. So that was really nice. It was really no trouble getting through security with them. I literally, when we got to the gate and I had my backpack and the plants consolidated into the tote bag, the gate lady literally looked at me, she was like, all right, you're good, your bags are good. And then we got on the plane and I, because the, not soil, the sphagnum moss was contained and there was tape over things so that nothing could fall out. I literally just put the bag underneath my seat and then I had it by my feet to where I just made sure I watched my feet so that I don't step on leaves or anything. But again, like everything is pretty small. So nothing, maybe a little bit on, the bi pen stuck out, but other than that, nothing really stuck out and it just went right under my seat. That is, that's how I traveled with my plants. And I think that's what I would do here on out. Or what I would also consider doing to travel with them is same thing, having them in their clear pots wrapped up so nothing can fall out of it. But then instead of a tote bag, I would maybe do like a hard case suitcase so that if you had larger plants if you had more delicate ones then you can put them in there and then the casing will protect them and then that is one that i would put in the overhead bin that is what i would do there are so many ways that you can fly with plants if you're nervous i was nervous and i looked on tiktok i just looked up like flying with plants and there are so many tiktoks out there that have different ideas on what you can do so you can really find what works best for you. Again, I pay for a checked bag anyways, so I use the free carry-on for that opportunity, but obviously other airlines, you don't have free carry-on. So look into that, see what's best for you. Um, that's how I did it and it worked out really well. I got home and everything was happy, safe. We had about a three hour, three and a half hour flight. So things were pretty good. Nothing had any issues. I'm so sorry if you guys can hear any of the landscaping going on outside, um, but yeah. Anyways, that's it. That was my international air raid show experience. I will say I would like to go again. I definitely want to go again. And I would like to go with Dino's mom, Yes, Mira. I think she would have a blast. I. I felt so bad like uprooting people like to go all the way to Miami but honestly I'm so thankful his family was super down like they really didn't bat an eye and I'm just so happy Dino and I I mean we were so thankful we really wanted to do some planty stuff so that was just a perfect opportunity and like I said we did not plan that like we just bought tickets and then we're like oh my god the show is We just bought tickets and we were like, oh my God, the show is the weekend that we're there. Like we should go. And yeah, so I don't know, I was really thankful. It was such a good time, even though the rain, it was an experience. And honestly, since we didn't participate in the talks, we didn't walk the whole garden. I feel like then when we go again, maybe next year, we have new things to experience from the show. We didn't experience everything the first time so that now when we go again we have new things that we want to look at experience all that i hope you guys enjoyed this episode 
this video. Um, before I went to the show, I was looking to see if I could find anything and everything about people's experiences to the IAS because I wanted to kind of get an idea for like what to expect. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you guys get the chance to go and visit and experience it for yourself. It is every September, once a year. They do have a different one. I think it's called TPIE or something like that in January. Um, that's a little bit different, I believe. That's more like a conference, I think. But yeah, every year, once a year in September, they do the IA IAS. And I really hope you guys get to go there sometime. It was one of my bucket list things I didn't think I was gonna get to go, <laughs> get to experience. Thank you guys so much for watching. Again, if you guys liked the video, give it a thumbs up below, subscribe. We're just doing some planty stuff. And yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.